Hey folks, Steve with Cult of the Lamb, and I have Julian Wilton here, creative director of Massive Monster, and one of the creative forces behind the game. Hey Julian, how's it going? Hello, hello. How are we going, loyal lamb lovers? How are we doing today? Ah, uh, well, this little <laughs> lamb lover is quite peachy. Thanks for asking, Ooh, and uh, no. thanks for doing this. We submitted. Um, to you fine folks for your approval to submit and present a variety of questions and we had over 200 so we have chosen some at random and julian here is going to answer as many as he can in 15 minutes so julian are you ready let's do it i'm ready let's all, go <laughs> all right so we'll start the clock at 15 minutes and the clock starts now yeah okay. <laughs> question one what's the inspiration for the gameplay of cult of the lamb well well um that's kind of a big question but you know i'll go quick get through it um so i think like horror films love them i like some cartoon shows so kind of that was a bit of the tone getting that from there i think that in terms of the gameplay uh, it really all came out of kind of iteration and trying things out. It was like a bunch of other games before this one. Um, but eventually we kind of had all these little followers and it's like a little colony sim game. And you're kind of murdering them and stuff like that because um, you're kind of running a hell. But we found that we actually really want to look after the followers. So it kind of made sense to kind of turn it into a cult thing. And then the lamb character came about because, you know, it's kind of like the lamb of God, you know, praise lamb um it's just a good symbolism for kind of religion and kind of this idea of the sacrificial lamb so yeah that's it boom <laughs> Ooh, question number two two-parter so the first part is how far in the development stage do you think you're in yep um so you know i don't know if we're meant to say but you know we're basically done we're just kind of like we got porting to do we've got a bunch of bug fixes um we're polishing and balancing and stuff like that so yeah, we're just kind of at the moment, we're just kind of rounding all the edges, kind of making sure that, yeah, things aren't frustrating and things can be understood easily. It's kind of the main thing at the moment. Um, yes, because there was just a recent announcement that Cult of the Lamb is coming out on all the consoles, Xbox, yes. PlayStation. Yeah, five consoles. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> we're actually not porting it, but um, our porting partner, Duke Games, is doing it. So, you know, um, praise, praise Lamb to them. Um, cause I would not want to do that. <laughs> no. And they did some amazing work with adventure pals and yeah. all those other great massive monster titles. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, and the second question of this two parter is, are you folks planning on making a ser I call it the lamb series of games or will this Ooh. be like a standalone in the cult of the lamb world? I think it'll probably be, I mean, I love the idea of, yeah, like changing it up. So, you know, you've got Cult of the Lamb, Cult of the Spider, Cult of the Bee, you know, just add a different animal each time could be fun. Um, but I think like it would probably be more of a one-off, but what we plan to is kind of like continue to kind of support the game. So we've kind of got already got a plan to do kind of two big content um, updates after launch and stuff like that and kind of keep supporting it and kind of keep giving love to it um, based on kind of what the community wants and just, yeah, making new content. That's awesome. That's exciting for me to hear. Yeah. And yes. then um, there's also been thrown around the idea of maybe, you know, make, getting a little cartoon show going or something, you know? So, you know, you never know. Could be, yeah, could be some more exploration of the IP. It worked with Cupman and Cuphead yeah. and Mugman. So uh, yeah, fingers exactly. crossed for the Cult <laughs> of the Lamb animated series. Uh, how many years has Cult of the Lamb been in development? Um, I think probably like three-ish. I feel like we pro we've been working with Devolver for maybe two years now. I think we got it around April or June, the original deal. So yeah, it's been been a while, but before that, yeah, it was probably a year of um, pre-production stuff, like prototyping, trying to figure out what the hell we're doing. As we said, it was a bunch of different games. So yeah, it's been, been a while. It, you know, we always think like, oh, you know, this one will be a quick one. And then it always takes three to four years. So rip. Can you mm -hmm. folks please add a possum in the game? Oh, okay. Please. Well, well, I feel like all right, I'll give you the secret. If you want a possum, um, find Jim. Find Jim on Discord and annoy him. Annoy him and say, I really want a possum. And Dang. then um, yeah, find him on Twitter, find him on everything, just say, give me a possum. 
and then he has to do it because yeah because <laughs> he's kind of in charge of all the all the animal drawing so yeah i think his twitter is art jimp or art by jimp but uh yeah we will... get him We'll put uh, we'll put it on <laughs> below the screen for you, fun folks. So, <laughs> next question: How much character customization will there be in terms of outfits, colors, and other wacky things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we have all the animals. I'm not sure exactly how many we have. It's probably thirty-ish, forty. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, because we kind of have the animals, and then there's kind of like the more kind of messed up kind of boss skin like if you kill one of the bosses you kind of get their skin and stuff like that um so there's kind of a lot of animals and then you can kind of pick any color for them um it's kind of like yeah it's basically like from the rainbow or whatever uh and then each kind of follower has a bit of a customization so you can pick like slightly different hair or something like that um the outfits unfortunately for launch we probably won't have much customization but we kind of do have plans for exploring that more in kind of post-release updates this person is dying to know if there will be cult of the lamb plushies yes there will we've actually already seen you know a few little prototypes there's some that look pretty dang cute that i want myself so yeah definitely keep uh, keep an eye out because there'll be there'll be some going around i would i'd love to see a mighty lamb funko pop <laughs> i think that would be super yes fun. yeah that's the dream you know let's do it funko Get, reach out to uh, Massive Monster Funko. Yeah, Funko, if you're listening, you know, give the people what they want. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Next question is, will the game be like the Binding of Isaac in a way that you can collect items and power-ups during each run? Yeah, well, like Binding of Isaac is definitely, you know, I'm a big fan of it myself. And I love the way that, yeah, as you progress, as you play through, each round's kind of different and the kind of stacking of different items. Uh, we've kind of got that in with kind of these tarot cards you collect where they kind of give different variations on the run. And then you can get a bunch of different weapons and curses, which all have their own modifiers, stuff like that. So yeah, as you play through, you're kind of getting stronger and getting a different like loadout basically. Um, but it's kind of like compared to Binding of Isaac, it's like quite life in comparison um but it is kind of the motivation building up this pool of random items that you can kind of get on your runs what is the expected ratio of time spent between a dungeon diving and the time you spend building or managing your cult camp it looks mm -hmm. like there will be a lot to do around the place yeah the well it kind of depends on each person like for me I kind of get a bit more base focused and kind of stuff like that. But I think in the dungeon, the dungeon runs can go anywhere from like five to like 15 minutes for like the longer near the end of the game. Um, so you kind of do a run and then I usually just hang out at the base a bit, you know, cook some food, hang out with my boys. Uh, and then there's also kind of like locations you can go to. So yeah, I kind of, I'd say for me, I'm about like, 65 percent base 35 percent dungeon run so it kind of gives a nice little break between the runs as well to kind of chill out and then when you're ready to go back into it you can kind of get prepped and just yeah kill it it's entirely up to you gamers <laughs> will the community be allowed to or able to mod the game in the future yeah i mean i don't know how modding works at all i've never looked at it so <laughs> i'm not too sure i don't think we're gonna support it for at least the initial launch but yeah, if someone if someone on the dev team, you know, wants to suss it out, then yeah, we're not closed off to it at all. So answer question. It's good. It's not a <laughs> at launch sort of thing, but if there's an appetite for it, if you pray yeah, hard, we can, yeah. If you just pray a, to the lamb, just you, annoy Jay. Annoy Jay on disco. <laughs> there you go. For <laughs> art stuff, annoy Jim. For yeah. dev stuff, annoy Jay. And just don't annoy me at all. <laughs> no, nope. just tell just tell Julian how much of a good job <laughs> that everyone's doing. That's all. <laughs> Love it. Can we add or remove different animals as cult members? Yeah, so kind of um, you start with maybe like five different skins or something, kind of just generic, more generic animals. So you got like a cat, dog, deer, and stuff like that. But as you kind of play through the game, you'll kind of unlock new skins as you go, and they're kind of they're almost like a little collectible of kind of different animals. And yeah, you can kind of pick which animal, what skin they are when they join the cult. But then you know, if you start to like look at a guy and you're like, you know what, I really don't like you. You look kind of ugly elephant. I don't want you in my cult. You can always kind of murder him or sacrifice him. So yeah, 
it's way way around everything this uh, this this person is big fan of red pandas <laughs> because they ask will there be any red pandas that i can add to my cult question mark question mark are the year are there going to be any red panda nbc npcs well um yes red pandas everyone annoyed jim last time it was great and he did it he did it so they're in um the the npc we don't currently but i actually do need to create a new npc design so who knows we know yeah maybe maybe i'll be inspired so yes yay keep bugging jim folks <laughs> has hi i'm more of a fan of roguelike games with a punch of permanent upgrades hades loop hero etc are there the same kind of permanent upgrades in cult of the lamb yeah yeah so how it works the current iteration that i think the final one we're locking in is that you kind of do like sermons at your base every day and you kind of fill up this like devotion meter and when you kind of fill it up you get to pick from like a player upgrade screen uh, and in that is kind of like, you can get more hearts, you can kind of um, get more ammo stuff for your, your curses. Uh, you can unlock different types of weapons and curses. So you could like unlock a pool of like poison weapons that kind of gets added to the pool. So it's kind of like you are getting stronger, but we're also kind of just increasing the pool of like different items that you can get that can be stronger as well. Um, so it's kind of like a nice balance between a bit of permanent and kind of like still keeping a bit of randomness like uh, binding of Isaac or something. Do you become a god yourself? Mm, I mean, you know, it depends. Depends what your definition of a god is. You know, I don't know. Let's. <laughs> I think. Um, I think the player. I think Lammy. Like we want the player to feel like they kind of they are powerful, and you know, the followers will do whatever they say, and they have a lot of control and power over them. So yeah, in that way potentially, but it is kind of. At the end of the day, you are kind of this servant to the um, to this red crown, which is the thing you wear, which has been given to you for from another entity. Um, so, you know, through the game, potentially, potentially something happens. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but, you know, we'll see. Who knows? Not me. <laughs> uh, will there be trading Steam cards yeah. on the Cult of the Lamb launch on Steam? Yeah, for sure. I don't know what... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what we'll do for the art yet, but we have, yeah, really cool artists working with us. So yeah, maybe we'll get him to do some stuff. Will you be able to customize your character at all? Like change their clothes or a different species? <laughs> there isn't for, for initial launch. Um, we won't have changing the character, but we do like in the actual spine file of the, the player, there's four different other skins um, based on kind of this older, when we were first making the game, there was like there was a, all these other cult leaders that you know could potentially be and stuff like that. So we've we've already got it set up. So potentially, um, and then also that you can um, change the poncho you wear as the uh, lamb, and it kind of changes the the dungeon run a little bit. So it might be that one of them, I think, you sacrifice some hearts, but you start with more tarot cards. So it kind of creates a bit more variation on the runs as well. <laughs> Will the camp area be customizable? Like, can you move around buildings and decorations? Sort of like Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yeah, yeah, you'll um, yeah, you'll have to build buildings around. Like some of them you'll need. So like, yeah, to cook food and stuff like that. But then there's also just a bunch of decorations we have and they're all quite cheap and stuff because we want, yeah, we want the players to customize their call, make it look, look really pretty, put their own like personal touch on it. Um, so I think, yeah, it should, like, whenever I'm making my base, I spend a good amount of time, you know, making sure it looks good. That is all the time we have for this round of Cult Ooh. q and a. Uh, Julian, thanks so much for taking the time to answer Thank the you. folks' questions. Thank you, everyone that put a question in. Really appreciate it. They were some amazing questions. And, yeah, keep, uh, and then bug call to the lamb on twitter bug massive monster on facebook on discord if you love what you see and you want to see more of it let us know and maybe this will be a series of things that we can do yeah. we, mm -hmm. we serve mm -hmm. the lamb and we also serve you <laughs> fine fans so thanks for tuning in make good choices this is steve hodges that's julian wilton and Ooh. we'll talk to you fine folks later